Дамы и господа, дорогие гости, дорогие друзья, участники заседания клуба «Валдай», мы начинаем пленарную сессию 21-го ежегодного заседания Международного дискуссионного клуба «Валдай». Мы провели четыре восхитительных и наполненных дискуссиями дня, и теперь можем, так сказать, попробовать подвести некоторые итоги. Я приглашаю на сцену президента Российской Федерации Владимира Владимировича Путина. Благодарю вас. Спасибо большое. Спасибо. Спасибо. Благодарю вас. Добрый день, уважаемые дамы и господа, дорогие друзья. Очень рад приветствовать всех вас. All of you at our traditional meeting. I would like to thank you right away for taking part in the heated and meaningful discussions of the Valdai Club. We are meeting on the 7th of November. This is the date of great significance both for our country, one can say, for the whole world. The Russian Revolution of 1917, just like... have largely defined the course of history, as well as the nature of politics, diplom diplomacy, economics, and the social life. We were also destined to live in the times of drastic, essentially revolutionary changes, and not only to make sense, but also to take part directly in the most complex processes of the first quarter of the 21st century. The Valdai Club is almost the same age as our century, and it's celebrated already 20 years. Quite often, people say that the time flew by and no one noticed, but that's not the case here. These two decades were not just full of crucial and quite often dramatic events of truly historical scale. Before our eyes, a completely novel world order is taking shape and it's unlike everything that we know from the past. For example, Westphalian system or Yalta system. New powers are emerging. The nations understand more clearly their interests, their self-worth, uniqueness and identity. They're ever more insistent in achieving their goals of development and justice. At the same time, societies are coming across a greater number of new challenges from breathtaking technological breakthroughs to devastating natural catastrophes, from outrageous social inequity to massive waves of migration and most acute economic crises. Experts are talking about the threats of new regional conflicts and global epidemics, about complex and ambiguous ethical aspects of interaction between the human and the artificial intelligence on the way the way traditions and progress combine with each other. Some of these issues we were we used to forecast during our meetings and discussed in detail in the Valdai Club. And some of the issues, well, we have intuitive presentiments about them, hoping for the best, but not ruling out the worst case scenario. Some things became a complete surprise for everyone because the current world is so unpredictable and dynamically ch changing. If we take a look back 20 years ago and look at the scale of changes and project the scale in the future, we can assume that the next uh, 20 years will be more, no less, but rather more complex. But how much more will depend naturally on a number of factors. And in order to analyze them and try to forecast something, I believe that's that's the reason why you gather here at the Valdai Club. To a certain extent, the moment of, of truth is coming. The previous world order is irreversibly becoming a thing of the past. One could say has become a thing of the past. And the shaping of the new world order is become the scene of uncompromising fight. Uncompromising, first and foremost, for the reason that it's not even the battle for power or geopolitical influence. It's a clash of the very principles that would be the foundation between the relation, you know, for the relation of the countries at the next 
historical stage, and its outcome will define whether all of us jointly can build a world that would allow everyone to develop and to solve the outstanding contradictions based on mutual respect of cultures and civilization without coercion and use of force. In the end, can the human society stay, remain a society with its ethical and humanistic principles? Will a human remain a human? It seems that there is no alternative to it, but just at the first glance. Unfortunately, there is an alternative to this. That is the descent of humankind into the abyss of aggressive anarchy, internal and external schisms, loss of traditional values, new forms of tyranny, essential abandonment of classic principles of democracy, basic rights and freedoms. More and more often, democracy is interpreted as the power, as the rule not of majority but of minority. They even contrast the traditional democracy and rule of people with a certain abstract freedom, and for that sake, democratic procedures, elections, majority, and the freedom of, um, of speech and media objectivity can be sacrificed. The threat is the imposal and becoming um, of ideologies totalitarian there since a norm. And that's what we see in the Western liberalism that has degenerated into, I believe, in extreme intolerance and aggression towards any alternative, towards any sovereign and independent thought. And today, it justifies neo-Nazism, terrorism, racism, and even mass genocide of civilian population. In the end, that's international conflicts and clashes that might bring about mutual destruction, because the weapons capable of doing that already exists, and it's constantly being improved. It acquires new forms as the technologies develop, and the club of the countries that possess such weapons is uh, becoming wider. No one can guarantee that in case of avalanche-like increase in threats and final deterioration of legal and moral norms, it would not be used. I have already said that we've come to a dangerous line, and calls of the, weapon, no, of the West to deliver a strategic defeat to Russia, a country with the largest arsenal of nuclear weapons, shows extreme adventurism of the Western politicians, at least some of them. Such blind faith in their own impunity and exceptionalism might turn to a global tragedy. At the same time, the previous hegemons used to ruling the world back from colonial times, learn and more and more often to their surprise that no one is listening to them. The attempts to um, maintain the, slip, the power slipping away through force only leads to overall instability and great attentions to casualties and destruction, but the result that they're trying to achieve to maintain their absolute power, such attempts do not ensure success because the course of history cannot be stopped. Instead of um, becoming aware of futility of their strive, the objective nature of changes, some of the Western elites seems are prepared to do everything not to allow for emergence of new international system in line with the interests of the global of the world majority. The policy of the US and their allies in the past years is more and more prominent through the principle if I can't have it, no one will. If you're not with us, you're against us. Well, this formula is very dangerous. Because here and in many countries of the world, there is such a saying that you reap what you sow. The chaos and systemic crisis is already in full swing in those countries that are trying to conduct such a policy. The claims to being exceptional, to being liberal and globalist messiahs to ideological and military and political monopoly are depleting those countries more and more that are trying to conduct this policy and pushing the world towards deterioration. It comes in direct contradiction with the true interests of the nations of the US and, and European countries. I'm sure that sooner or later the West will understand that because the foundation of its former great achievements was always the pragmatic and sober approach, based on very harsh and at times cynical but rational evaluation of what's happening in their own capacities. And here I'd like to highlight once again, unlike our opponents, 
Russia does not perceive the Western civilization as, a, as an enemy. It does not raise the question, us or them, who's not with us, he's against us. We, we never say that. We don't want to pontificate to anyone. We don't want to impose our worldview on anyone. Our position is an open one, and it's the following. The West has accumulated, indeed, tremendous human, intellectual, cultural, and material resources, thanks to which it can successfully develop, remaining one of the crucial elements of the world system. But it is precisely one of, together with other actively developing countries and group, states and groups of countries, the notion of hegemony in the new international sphere is off the table. And when Washington and other Western capitals are become aware of that and recognize this cold hard fact, then the process of building of the global system in line with the challenges of the future will finally enter the phase of true constructive building. I hope to God that it will happen as soon as possible. It is in common interest also in the interest and first and foremost in the interest of the West. As of now, everyone who is interested in the creation of a just and viable world have to spend too much effort on overcoming the destructive actions of the waste of the West clinging to their own monopoly. It's apparent that it's happening and everyone can see that in the West, in the East, in the South and everywhere. They're trying to keep their power and monopoly. These are apparent things. These efforts could have been directed with much greater use and result to solving common problems that indeed concern everyone. Demographic problems, social inequality, climate change, food security, health care, new technologies. That's what we could think about it. What we all truly need to work on. Today I will allow myself several philosophical aside since this is a discussion club. Then I hope that will follow in the vein of the discussions that were happening here before. I have already said that the world is changing drastically and irreversibly. It is unlike the previous version of world order. Due to the combination of parallel coexistence of, true, of two seemingly mutually exclusive phenomena, a fast growing conflict potential and fragmentation of political, economic and legal field on the one hand, and the maintaining close interconnectedness of the whole world space on the other hand it can be perceived as counterintuitive because we're used to the fact that such trends usually follow one another and substitute one another. Century after century, the times of conflict and breaking off ties is, are replaced by more beneficial periods of cooperation. That is the dialect, the dynamic of the development of history. It seems that it doesn't work today. But let's start to maybe have a, a bit of a discussion about it. Most acute and principled, emotionally charged conflicts naturally significantly complicate the global development but do not put an end to it. Instead of um, chains of cooperation, destroyed by political means and even military means, appear another, more complex, sometimes less linear, but they maintain economic and social ties. We have seen that in the previous years. Quite recently, the, the so-called Collective West made an unprecedented attempt to banish Russia from the global system of economic and political system. The number of sanctions and punitive measures against our country is unprecedented in history. Our opponents assumed that they would deliver to Russia a devastating blow and knockout, something that it would not bounce back from. It would stop being one of key elements of international system. I think there is no need to remind you of what happened in reality. The very fact that the anniversary edition of All Day Club has gathered such a representative audience speaks for itself. Well, it's, it's not a matter about Valda, it's about the reality that we're living in right now and in which the conditions which Russia lives in and the world needs Russia and no decisions by Washington or Brussels alleged masters cannot change it. The same applies to their other decisions. Even at 